Hello, Georgi Romanich here. Today we are going to talk about wind direction and uh, how we can obtain information about wind direction if we know two components of horizontal wind. Two wind components are the zonal and meridional components. Zonal component is west to east, positive eastward, and the meridional wind component is south to north, positive northward. That's the definition that we use in meteorology and atmospheric sciences. So knowing these two wind components, we can easily calculate magnitude of the wind, the just Pythagoras theorem, and I will demonstrate that today. But we can also calculate wind direction. And uh, calculation of wind direction is a little bit more complicated than calculated magnitude, but nevertheless it is possible, and today we will see how to do it. This should finalize our mini-series of videos on wind direction and how to process wind direction data. And I hope these videos are useful for you, particularly when you need to process this data in a computer code. Let's get started. Let's first discuss radians and degrees, and later in the video you will see why. Of course, both are used to measure angles, and the uh, general public prefers degrees, whereas in mathematics we prefer radians. We prefer radians because radians are a pure measure of angle based on the radius of the circle. If I have a uh, circle, like so, and this is radius of that circle R, then one radian is angle made when we take this radius and wrap it around the circle. So I take this radius and I wrap it here around the circle. This angle then, over here, is one radian and it is approximately equal to 57.2958 degrees. To convert radians to degrees we say that angle in radians times 180 divided by pi. You can conclude that from this figure. To convert degrees to radians, we take angle in degrees and we multiply with pi over 180 degrees. You will see this will come handy later in the video. Now let's talk about wind components. In meteorology, we call zonal wind U. So U is zonal component of wind and it is positive eastward, or towards east. V is meridional component, and it is positive northward. Let's run through one example where someone gives us U and V components, and we need to figure out everything else. So let's say U is equal 1 meters per second, and uh, V is also equal one meter per second. Now let's plot these two components in Cartesian and polar coordinates. So in Cartesian coordinates this would be positive x, this would be positive y, and let's say this is uh, one unit and this is also one unit. This would be one meter per second and this would be one meter per second, therefore this would be vector let's call it V, associated with U. So this is U component and this is V component. This same wind in polar coordinate system, where I align polar axis L with the X direction, would have this vector V and the angle phi where phi is counterclockwise from L. So from this graph, we can already see that U component is intensity of this V, this is sine for intensity, times cosine of angle phi, and V component is intensity of vector V times sine of angle phi. However, in this case, we are not given phi and v, we are given u and small v, 
So if we want to find magnitude, you know that magnitude, check my video on polar coordinates, would be square root of u squared plus v squared. And you can see that from this graph, Pythagoras theorem. And if you plug in these numbers over here, you will see that intensity is square root of 2, which is approximately 1.4 meters per second. Well, that was easy. So we conclude if we know u and v components, it is quite easy to find the magnitude of the wind. Just Pythagoras theory. But what about wind direction? Remember, by definition, wind direction is defined as the direction wind is blowing from. So this vector in uh, terms of wind direction would be this u equal 1 and v equal 1 meter per second corresponds to southwest wind because this is south, this is west. All right, now knowing all this information, how do we get wind direction from u and v components? You will recall from my previous video that polar angle phi is equal 270 degrees minus alpha, where alpha is wind direction measured clockwise from north. This is north and this is east. So this is angle alpha. And you will also remember that if the result of this simple equation is uh, negative, then add 360 degrees so you get angles in the range between 0 and 360. From here, we have that alpha is equal 270 degrees minus phi. But what is phi from this figure? Well, you will notice that phi is arc tangent of V and U. But we have to use arc tangent 2. And I have entire video describing why we have to use arc tangent 2. Regular arc tangent will only retrieve angles in the first and fourth quadrants. Arc tangent 2 is generalization of regular arc tangent to second and third quadrants. Check my video on arc tangent 2. I am not going to talk more about it in this video, but angle phi is retrieved using this mathematical operation. Therefore, if I substitute this over here, I get that alpha is equal 270 degrees minus phi, and phi is arc tangent 2 with the input v and u, times 180 divided by pi. Why is this necessary? Because arctangent 2, by definition, will give you angles in radians. And look, to transfer angles in radians to degrees, we have to multiply with 180 and divide by pi. And this is how you find meteorological wind direction knowing the components V and U. However, we are almost done, but not exactly done. What is missing is a small detail. You will remember that in this formula, we said, if you get negative angle, add 360 degrees. Well, it turns out that in this case, in this formula, you can have angles that are over 360 degrees. And from my previous video, you know how we handle that situation. We use the modulus operator. So if this formula gives you angle that is over 360 degrees, over north, then you have to use modulus operator. So formally, alpha is modulus of this, and the divisor is 360. Remember from my previous video, this is called 
dividend, this is called divisor. And this is formula that you can use to get wind direction knowing components V and U. Let's see a few examples of this formula. Here I uh, made a nice table where here we have zonal component U, here we have meridional component V, and I purposely now made two columns. One is where we don't use this modulus operator. As you can see, that's this one, black square. And this column is when we use modulus operator. So in our example, 1, 1, u is 1, v is 1, that we examined here, as you can see, we get that both formula give us 225 degrees, which is southwest wind, which is correct. If u is negative 1 and v is 1, then the result is 135 degrees in both cases. So theoretically, you don't have to use modulus. If u is 1 and v is negative 1, result is 315 in both cases. So again, you theoretically don't have to use modulus operator. However, if u is negative 1 and v is also negative 1, and that would be uh, angle of 405 degrees, but that is over 360, so in order to retrieve correct angles 0 to 60, you have to use modulus operator, and that corresponds to 45 degrees northeast wind. Here I just added a few other random u and v uh, values, so it's not just one negative one, so you can see the difference between formula without modulus and formula with modulus. Also, I carried out these calculations in MATLAB. So when you are using arctangent 2 in MATLAB, you have to use, uh, you have to first input V and then U. And uh, I omitted here, as you will see, this conversion 180 divided by pi for simplicity. After watching last few videos that were mostly on wind direction data, polar coordinate system, azimuth angle, standard angle, and so on, you have to admit, you have to admit, that you are becoming expert in uh, wind direction measurements. Well, perhaps not measurements in terms of instrumentation, but how to process those data, how to interpret them, and how to plot them and represent them graphically on uh, wind rows. Until next video, goodbye.